Well, thanks for staying with us on The Real Story. Next, we are talking to the Republican candidate for U.S. Senate here in Connecticut, Leora Levy. She is a Cuban-American. In fact, she escaped the communist regime of Fidel Castro in Cuba with her parents when she was a young child. She is well known in Connecticut's GOP circle, and she is a committee woman on the Republican National Committee. Levy has never run for office before, but is hoping to grab the seat U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal now holds. She joins us on The Real Story this morning. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I know you were on with Matt Karen this summer. This is my first time having you on Real Story, but tell me how you're feeling with just a couple days to go uh, until Election Day. It is so exciting. The momentum is building every day Everywhere I go, I have people coming to me saying, I'm a Democrat. Don't tell anybody, but I'm voting for you or in, and independents. I'm winning the independent and unaffiliated voters. And they're voting for me because they know it's time for change. You know, our senator has had 37 years in office. That's plenty of time to make life better. But frankly, life is not better for anybody in Connecticut. Life doesn't have to be this way. We can get back to a life where, uh, where th our lives are, were affordable, are affordable, where we feel safe in our communities, where there isn't an invasion at the border bringing fentanyl in our communities that's killing a generation of American children. Our kids can have a first-rate education again that's not politicized that is not exposing them to inappropriate content. You know, our, this generation of children has really had a hard time between the COVID lockdowns, the masking, that the, the learning loss, and the, the effect on, on development of our young children, fentanyl coming in. There's a, they've had a very tough time. They, they deserve a first-rate education. Now, you debated last week with Senator Blumenthal. Um, and on this Sunday morning, we're going to ask you how you think it went last week. Uh, we know that uh, one of your, some, someone from your campaign had come out to the press afterward and said that you had won. But where do you see how you did that night? I won. How, where do you, how do you measure that? I measure that in the response that I'm getting, the, the overwhelming response I've gotten from the people who watched the debate, who said I won. I, I also won because he couldn't defend his policies. His policies don't work. He votes 98.2% of the time with Biden. They have shut down American energy production. They have had an intentional war on American energy production that has created a shortage. You know, America has the largest reserves of energy in the world, and we produce it more cleanly than any other country. Why wouldn't you want good, clean American energy so and good American jobs? So tell me, if you are in this position, what yeah. would you do to lower energy costs? I would immediately release American energy production, renew the leases that they canceled, reestablish exploration for oil on U.S. public lands and waters. I, I would encourage more American energy production. Basic economics. When you increase the supply, the price goes down. The reason that, that our prices are so high is that they created an artificial shortage. And they are using election year gimmicks that are foolish and reckless to, to try to bring the price down temporarily. They have depleted our strategic petroleum re reserve. That is meant for emergencies. They've depleted it by over 40 percent. Last night, my opponent spoke to that directly. He supports that policy. Okay, so here's a question. I call it reckless and foolish. Gas prices are, you know, crazy for people. I know, because is I it, drive all over the state. Right, exactly. <laughs> so some would say that that is an emergency, right? That that would be the correct use of that. What's your response to that? No. That is not an emergency. An emergency is when the Gulf gets hit by a, a major hurricane that shuts down the rigs. An emergency is when there is some sort of attack or war or, or some other type of military 
operation. Well, the war, the war in Ukraine, yes, right? but that that's has not an increased. emergency in the United States. Okay. Excuse me. All right. This and is a, a an election year gimmick. It is a drop in the bucket compared to the the amount of energy resources we need for the prices to come down. On and, that note, because yes. you had said this last or the, at, at the debate last mm -hmm. week, you had said that the Democrats have intentionally caused inflation. Explain that. Well, they have passed trillions, trillions of dollars of wasteful spending that even their own economist, Larry Summers, warned them would cause historic inflation. They are set on their socialist, big government programs, their green dream ideology at the expense of the American family. They don't care what it does to our budgets. You, you know, when, when the senator was asked about how he would rate our economy, he said, well, it's ongoing. You know what? Connecticut families don't have ongoing time to pay their bills. Those bills are due every month. And when I was in Durham at the Durham Fair, a man came up to me very emotionally and said, you know, I have a good job. I'm a welder. I've always provided for my family, but now I don't know how I'm going to pay my mortgage. Every month I have to juggle the bills, figure out which ones I'll pay, which ones I will let slide and hope sure. they don't come after me. People are hurting. This is not some esoteric exercise in a college textbook. But this back is to real inflation. life. Back to inflation. Inflation is global too, right? So yes, but I'm your, running for what, U.S. Senate. So, I care about the United States. Right, So, but when you say that the Biden's policies caused inflation, did they worsen inflation in your view or just caused inflation? They caused inflation in the United States. On the day he took office, inflation was below 2%. If you look at a graph of inflation starting from the day he took office, it is a straight line up. The war in Ukraine happened up here. So then it went there, but it was already up here. Okay. Okay. And and no, no. any economist will tell you that. This is and this is why we're having this show right now because we want you to be able to explain your view and what he said versus what you think. So I want to, on that note, make sure we get to other things here. Abortion. Just restate your stance on abortion so people at home understand where you stand, because it is starkly different from Senator Richard Blumenthal. Yes, we are starkly different. Mm -hmm. If if there's anybody who is extreme on abortion, it is my opponent. He has authored a bill to uh, uh, make abortion legal on demand in the United States up to and including the day of birth. Even my pro-choice friends are not there. Reasonable Americans agree there should be limits. My personal position is that I am pro-life with the exceptions of life of the mother, rape, and incest. But I know the laws in Connecticut are set. They are in the Connecticut Constitution, and they won't change. I'm going to Washington to work on the problems that are affecting Connecticut families every day. The fact they can't feed their kids. The fact they have to worry, do I feed my kids? Do I fill my tank of, for, of gas to get to work to earn some money? Sure. Am I going to be able to afford or even get home heating oil this winter? You know, they announce it's going to be rationed. There's a historic shortage of home heating oil and natural gas. Even the CEO of Eversource, Joe Nolan, yes, wrote a letter to President Biden last week warning of dire circumstances. No, and it's an issue that it, that voters care about, home heating and, and their cost this winter. There's no doubt well, about that. we live in New England. We're not in Florida. We're going to need it soon. It's going to get cold. Okay, last question, because again, we're timed. I would go on with yes. you for another hour if we could. I'm but happy I wanna, to. <laughs> I want to make sure we address, and you've talked about this a lot before, but for our audience, again, people will be watching this and they'll mm -hmm. look at the differences and then they can make their decision. Mm -hmm. But you got 
former President Donald Trump's endorsement, mm -hmm. right? And so the Democratic Party really trying to pair you with him. He even did a, a fundraiser for you in Mar-a-Lago. Yes, you used did. that money for TV ads, et cetera, uh, in our state. And I hope people like my ads. They're on right now. They are on right now. So tell me where you see your relationship with him, because Connecticut is unique in that, as you had mentioned earlier in the interview, we have a very large unaffiliated voter block, right? right. That could go either way. And sometimes, you know, a Connecticut Republican can be viewed differently. There's a wide range in the different views of the party here right. in our state. So wh where do you view your relationship with the former president right now? He's a former president. He was a Republican president. I always support the Republican nominee. And because I believe our policies work, they're the best for every single individual American and for our country as a whole. And you know, two years ago, our country was much better off. People's 401ks were in a much better place. You know, my opponent in voting for that Biden Blumenthal build inflation back a better bill, he raised taxes on middle class Americans. He raised taxes on small businesses, our job creators. He raised taxes on people's 401ks just as so, they were dropping. But just so we get back to this, because again, okay, but we're timed. What do you want people those to know are the about issues? Sure, that and we've talked care about, them, about and we have definitely talked about them, and I agree with you on that. But there are some people who are unaffiliated who would say, I might or might not vote for her. Okay based on her relationship with the former president. I'm Leora Levy. It is I who, who is on that ballot. And if there's any president on the ballot, it is Joe Biden, because it's his policies that are making their lives difficult and life can be better. We need common sense, pro-growth economic policies. We need a strong policy to support our police and er eliminate this anti-police climate that has caused the increase in crime that all of us are experiencing, making us feel unsafe in our communities. We need a, a mother. Yeah. I'm a mother. Yo soy madre. Yo tengo una, un corazón latina. Yo soy madre de tres hijos. I'm a mother of three sons. I raised them here in Connecticut. I stand with parents and it's their right to raise their children, not the government, not the schools to interfere between the parents and the children. Our children deserve a first-rate education, traditional reading, writing, history, math, civics. I have to go now. But okay. <laughs> U.S. candidate Senate, Leora Levy, thank you again. Again, I wish we had more time because I, I do keep too. going. But well, thank you very much for coming back. on The Real Story. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that does it for us in The Real Story. You can find these on our streaming platform as well as on the Fox 61 News app, and we will see you here next week. Go out and vote on Tuesday. We'll see you then.